Hi, I'm Kim, and you're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free, stay free, and go on to live wonderfully happy, successful lives. Many of my friends here at Kim Wilson TV uh, leave comments implying, you know, maybe they wish they could stay with the narcissist or how uh, can they stay with the narcissist. I get a lot of emails, you know, is this really over? Is there anything else I can do? I just hung up uh, from a phone call with a fellow YouTuber who has a YouTube channel. Uh, it is about his experience as a victim of narcissistic abuse. And again, same thing, like is there any validity to this hoovering that's going on? Uh, you know, yes, you could stay if you wanted to. I, I suppose you could stay if you wanted to. Now, throughout my five years uh, with Trevor, there were, you know, many, many times where I had absolutely given up faith in him. I had absolutely reached a point of discontentment, distrust. Uh, I just, I was at the end of my rope. And I remember this one day, it was m many years ago, where we were sitting out back in the yard. And now I'm a widowed single mother of five sons and, you know, a whole full-time job and I have all this responsibility and he says to me one day while we're sitting in the yard you know Kim with all the stress you have with the kids and my kids are grown but still you know stuff comes up you know I wish I could be a better partner to you I should be more supportive of you and he kind of gave this speech and almost instantly my frustration my anger my distrust of him just seemed to melt away and I thought to myself my goodness maybe this is salvageable maybe he's waking up to the reality of his behavior and horrendous uh, treatment of me now, Trevor's little moment of whatever the fuck was going on there uh, did uh, give me a new sense of hope. It did definitely put my defenses down again. Now, by morning, he was back at it with his bullshit. And a few days later, I'm talking to his mom, and she says to me, you know, I hope Trevor's treating you better because I told him he should blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Word for word for word, what Trevor had said that day. Not one word of that came from Trevor's soul, not one word from his heart, not one word out of his own mind. He had merely mimicked what his mother had said to to him. And I'm sure she said, hey, you know, she's going to leave you if you don't stop treating her that way. Maybe you should consider these things. And he didn't consider those things at all or apply them uh, in his treatment of me or in our relationship in any way. All he did was mimic them to get a moment's reprieve and to get my defenses back down again and well fuck it the shit show and the nightmare wasn't right back on. It just like that. Now, I'm not the type of person to hold a grudge. In fact, I can, you know, be in a combative situation with someone, listen to what they have to say, say what I have to say, and just let it go. Because you know what? It's been said. And I don't need to harbor resentments or grudges or carry it on to the next minute, hour, or day. Now, because of my willingness to let challenging moments go, of course, this opened up a floodgate of abuse where Trevor would say, you're bipolar, you know, you need medication, and, and this kind of thing. But I just want to give you a bit of history. Now, I grew up in, you know, a first-generation Canadian kind of family where everybody had pretty much come from Ireland. So it was very, very common in my family, you know, to go to a family wedding or a funeral or a party and, you know, all the men punching each other in the backyard then put their arms around each other and everybody have a beer. So in in my mind growing up, the fact that you were in conflict with someone or the fact that you'd had a fight or an argument with them did not change the fact that you loved them, that you owed them your loyalty, and that you owed them uh, your respect, love, and admiration. That a fight was just that. It came, it went, and life carried on, and everybody hugged, kissed, and made up and had a bloody beer.
So, you know, when this stuff would happen with Trevor, I, I guess I took that kind of uh, approach to that where he would do this stuff to me and I'd think, okay, you know, that's everybody punching each other at the wedding, you know, time to kiss and make up kind of thing. Now, in many ways, growing up in an Irish home made me uh, a very, very forgiving person and a very loyal person. It really made me understand that a fight was not the end. In fact, a healed fight, a forgiven fight can become a really great foundation for, for a long-term loving, nurturing relationship. But I think it also made me very vulnerable and highly susceptible to be a narcissist victim. Now, I get up really early, and of course, Trevor uh, would sleep in. So every morning, I'm up at 5 o'clock. I'm on my computer. You know, I had been living in a state of utter terror, utter confusion, uh, absolute fear. Uh, my finances were being ruined. My credit rating was being ruined. Uh, all of my relationships had been challenged. I no longer had any hobbies, interests, passions. I had nothing. Absolutely brainwashed, twisted shell of who I used to be. I had been physically altered to the point that, you know, I never slept. I could barely eat. I was so tired, so fatigued. It, it just, it, it was horrendous. And there I was every morning, desperately trying to find a way to help him. I am now assuming all the responsibility for what's happening because, of course, he has gaslit the shit out of me and projected all of, of his bullshit on me. And I'm owning it all. And I am desperately trying to find a way to help him, a solution to this crisis. I'm trying desperately to save my relationship and find the man that I had fallen in love with. Now, every single video I watched, um, including Sam Vagnon's, uh, every blog uh, entry I read, every book I read, all said the exact same thing. You have got to leave this relationship. And this was very angering and very frustrating to me because I wasn't looking for a way out. I was looking desperately for a way to fix a relationship, solve whatever mysterious problem was impairing Trevor. And I was desperately trying to save Trevor from himself because he was a truly demonic and deviant and oh god such a destructive force and I just constantly felt so fatigued and so worn out from shoveling the shit pile and shoveling the shit pile that he created and the shit was coming in faster than I could shovel it so you know I had become very very broken very frustrated I wanted to know how to fix it I, I didn't want to hear you have to leave and that's all I heard every single video every blog entry every book you got to get out of there now i would listen to you've got to leave i would read you've got to leave and what i would think to myself is okay well maybe you guys aren't as loyal as me maybe you're not as big as me not as tough not as strong not as determined not as dedicated to this relationship and to this man i honest to god believed if i could just put the puzzle pieces together if i could just come to some point of understanding as to what the fuck was happening because i honest to god was uh, stupefied by what was going on and in a tremendous amount of very deeply felt emotional pain and I thought god fucking damn it I am going to love this beast well I'm going to love this man till he's whole I am going to save him from himself I am going to continue to swim out in this sea of shit that he created to try and save him from drowning in it I was absolutely locked on determined absolutely plus I knew he had very serious abandonment issues, and I was going to be damned if I abandoned him. But the reality is Trevor had abandoned me when the love bombing stopped. He was gone, and he'd left me, and I was there fighting to save a relationship that didn't even exist. So in the end, what it absolutely came down to for me was... Um, this little statement I had read uh, during one of my searches, uh, searches that said, if you believe you deserve better, you probably do. And it just stuck with me. And I started to ask myself some really, really important personal questions. 
was this type of abuse something I believed I deserved in my life? Well, fuck no, absolutely not. I had been absolutely a stand-up uh, partner to Trevor. Um, was I willing to live in a loveless situation? Absolutely not. I felt that I was definitely damaged and broken, but I did believe that uh, with some time and some healing that I would once again be a very loving person, very willing to express love, uh, very much capable of doing that, and become again capable of, of receiving love. Now, why I say once again is because truly during that time with Trevor, I had absolutely shut down a emotionally absolutely but I knew that I was shut down emotionally and I wanted to be emotionally alive again because I definitely knew the difference between the dead emotional state I was in and the once very much alive emotional state I had been in before so no I wasn't settling for any loveless relationships so as I started working my way through this list, do I want to be called names? Do I want to be hit? Do I want to be spit on? Do I want to be humiliated? Do I want to be, you know, incapable of doing anything right? Anything. Like, I'm not fucking around when I say I couldn't bake a potato right for this man. I couldn't do a fucking thing right. You know, I, my everything, everything was in fucking ruins. And I wanted to have my life back. I missed my life terribly. You know, I could say that, yes, during that period, I missed the illusion that Trevor had created, but it had come to a point where I missed Kim so much more. Like, I just, I had vanished. I, you talk about the narc ghosting you. I had absolutely dissipated. I was a gutted out shell of who I had been. And no, I didn't want to live like that. And I knew better. I knew that that a real relationship with a normal loving human being just simply did not look like that fucking horrible shit. So yes, you can stay, but ask yourself, what is your life worth? I mean, do you realize that the odds of each of us being here is one in 400 fucking trillion? We are miracles. We don't, well, you know, if you're a Buddhist and you believe you're coming back as a fucking grasshopper or a chipmunk or something, knock yourself out. But you know what? Even if I did come back as a fucking chipmunk or something, what the fuck is that? That is not my human life. That is not my human existence. That is not my one in 400 trillion and shot at making something of my life and finding love and human connection, fuck it. Yeah, you can do it if you want to. Why the fuck would you want to do it? No matter how beaten, how battered, how bad you're feeling, no matter how far off your life's path you feel that you are, and even if you feel that there is not an ounce of strength in you, I'm telling you, dig deep. I, I was digging like a fucking fiend trying to find just one ounce of strength in me and you know what that ounce of strength is in you and if you can just muster that up and you can pick your sorry ass up your busted up broken fucking ass and you can get out of there I'm telling you it, it's not going to be easy but it's a fuck of a lot easier than selling out selling your soul to evil and staying with that rotten fucking thing okay this is beyond a dead end road you're just jumping into a black hole of fucking purgatory. Run the fuck away. If you just stop, look inside. The strength and the power to leave is there. You have to get away. And if you're gone, stop letting these fucks hoover you. You're playing the fucking game with them now. Block them. Make it stop. You know, people go on about, oh, you know, I went back again. I fell victim to the hoovering. Well, guess what? You got your ass kicked again, and had you been no contact, the fuck couldn't have got to you, and you'd be safe today. But no, you're right back, busted up again, licking your wounds. At some point, we have to take some responsibility for a recovery and say, you know what? We didn't do any of that shit. We are not to blame. We are not the villains here. We are the victims. But we have to take responsibility and at least find that ounce of strength you have in you, that ounce of strength to leave, to stay gone, to never go back. So in conclusion, the answer to the question, is there any way to stay? Yes. Yes, there are lots of ways to stay. If you are absolutely, completely willing to give up all of your passion, all of your love, all of your, you know, creativity. If you're willing to give up the essence of who you are, yes, you can stay. Are you willing to wallow in misery? 
for the rest of your fucking life. If you're willing to do that, yes, you can stay. Are you willing to completely sell out and sacrifice everything that you are to feed a vampire, zombie, soul-eating, flesh-eating monster and in the end get nothing, no respect, no dignity, no love, no empathy, no compassion, no consideration, nothing. Are you willing to do that? If you're willing to do that, yes, you can stay. Guys, are you willing to expose your fucking kids to it? Your family? Are you willing to give up everything for what? For what? Yeah, you can stay. I hope you don't. I seriously hope you don't. So snap the fuck out of it, okay? Snap the fuck out of it. Make your life worth something. This is where you take control. This is where you get revenge. This is where you get vindicated. This is your closure. Do not throw this away. Get the fuck out. Stay out. Don't go back. Be done with it. Be done with it. I'm Kim Wilson. Peace be with you. Love you guys lots.